Good afternoon. Are there any public speakers? No. Uh, I'll, approval of the minutes for February 22nd. I'll take a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed. Minutes approved. Committee to the work plan. And let me say, this is the this is the one that was just given out, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Everybody have a copy of this? No. I guess this is something added to. Uh, it's revisions to what's in the book. Revisions yeah. to what's in the book. When I rechecked the numbers this morning. What is this? This is not That's not ours. No, no, no. no one's <laughs> I'm looking at that. It's underway that will help the agency achieve its 2010 goals. Let's start with capital construction. Scott Mason, acting uh, assistant chief, construction safety. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to start off with this uh, picture right here. This is the launch box at Second Avenue. This is where we're going to launch the tunnel boring machine. This excavation is 75 feet wide, 900 foot long, and extends 75 feet below the street level. This structure will also be the site of the future 96th Street Station, which will be constructed in a subsequent uh, contract. We'll go through my 2010 safety goals. First, I want to uh, thank all my staff and construction staff for making us have a, a pretty successful year. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my people in case they're watching. Uh, my number one uh, thing for 2010 goals, improve our safety performance for uh, contractor forces by oversight of the construction manager's office. What this means is we're looking for timely submittals of safe work plans, uh, safety resumes from contractors, and we also want to implement, implement safety training for our uh, contractor inspectors. Number two, promote a culture of safety awareness. This, we want this to go throughout our organization. We want safety to be our number one priority. Um, our next one, maintain MTACC's continued awareness for safety controls. This means flagmen for trucking operations, fencing around our sites, signage, security forces. And in addition, we have a full-time MPT person assigned to Second Avenue subway project. This is an initiative we did, MTACC Safety Engineers Daily Reports. We send this out to the construction manager's office. We also send our findings to the contractor safety engineers as well. Our next one, we did a, we redid our accident investigation form to get more information out of it. When you, know, when you get an accident, then you have to go back and look at it. What can you learn from this accident? What do you need to know at the time of the accident? What do you learn from the accident? And what can you do better in the future? And that's something we're going to really focus on this year. Next, we have encourage contractor incentive programs. We seem to, the trend is contractors that have incentive programs tend to trend lower with respect to accident rates. My next one, implement, uh, initiate employee orientation with project-specific presentation. This is mostly for the um, tunnel boring machine operations, tunnel safety, training with the self-rescuers, communication, evacuation. We're keeping up with our quarterly assessments with follow-up. That's standard. This next one's another initiative. We're, we're kind of pushing forward. We're not, no, we are pushing forward. Disciplinary action. Usually it's written, verbal, and then disciplinary action. If we're having employees, contractor employees that aren't following the rules, we're, we're demanding disciplinary action, whether we remove them from the site, whether they get suspended for a day's pay. You know, we're really looking to make safety number one, and just breaking the rules isn't going to be our policy. People aren't going to follow the rules. There's going to be consequences. Next, we have a month. Every project have a monthly safety committing, committee meeting, and this involves the uh, entire project team, where we review the safety issues. And another thing we like to do is coordinate our contractors. 
with all the different projects and all their different interfaces and make sure they're on the same page with respect to deliveries and project and intertwining with each other. We're still using the database. We use the database to, to track our audits and our accidents. This is a new one, this uh, monthly safe work plan audit process. This, this one is for activities that we have. If we have a contract, say, for two years, and we're doing the same activity you know, over and over, and then we get a safe work plan in the beginning of the two years, and a year later, we don't look at that plan again. We just assume, okay, they submitted it. This is what we're going to do. Activities like excavation, concrete pours, rebar installation. We go out and we do an audit of the safe work plan. We'll, have, we'll go out with the safe work plan. We'll go with the construction foreman. And we have a checklist to make sure that they're keeping up with what they submitted. And uh, this is working out pretty well so far. This next one, um, quarterly safety. This is for my staff. We're trying to get my staff together at least four times a year to uh, review all the project-wide and MTACC-wide accidents and see what we can pick up from each other. And that, that ties into my project-wide lessons learned as a tool for, to improve state, safety performance for all our jobs. Um, I also suggest to this committee, I will share our accident information with everybody. It might be of interest to your groups, too, to see what we have with, if it's a fall protection issue, electrical safety, you know, I would be happy to share it with, this, with people on this committee. We had 22 lost time injury cases in 2009. Sure. The thing that I find interesting about that is that if you look at the, at the growth in the amount of construction that was being done from 2005 to 2006 and then from 2006 to 2007, and that growth continued but your accident rate didn't. So that's this, you have to really understand how much construction each of these years had in order to realize that that's really quite a record. Thank, thank you. There's our rate for this year. Uh, even though we had two more accidents in last year, we, our goal is always zero accidents. That's how we attack. That's how we want to go about this. But we're down to 177. And this is just all the projects put up against each other. These accidents. These accidents. Do, does this include civilian accidents of? Uh, walking past the site? No, this is just contractor accidents. And who has the, uh, the raw information on whether or not there have been uh, civilians uh, injured uh, in, in, in and around the sites of, of the construction that's going on? We work in concert with the OSIP program, and they keep a lot of that record keeping as far as pedestrian accidents. Like if someone's walking down the sidewalk, say, and they trip, and it's not related to my, it's not within our work area, but they say it was, or it was because we made them move off the curb, or we made a, a walkway for them and they tripped on it, and no one was there to see it, and they filed a claim. We have our OSIP people follow up with those type of uh, claims. Can we get that information? Sure. Yes. I will inquire. Yeah. I could just get a Would request for information for a pedestrian, yeah, no problem. Thank you. In June, actually, the Office of Risk Management is making presentations, so we can ask them to. Okay. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, Mr. Seabrook, we also uh, we go over those at these monthly meetings, too, any kind of pedestrian incident and accident. And I make sure my guys keep our record keeping up to date in case we get asked for information down the road. So when you get an opportunity, would you pass that on to us, please? Sure. So we'll have an idea. Of what, kind, what type of accidents that we do have? I'm not so much of what type of accident it was. It's just whether or not whether it was related to uh, our construction sites and, and whether or not I'm looking down the road saying, is the MTA getting sued for this, that, this, that because of negligence by the contractor of leaving equipment out or, or you know, debris and stuff in, in, in the roadway and things like that? So I I'm understand. trying to right. see. You only have 22. You know, I'm looking to see if there's 142 on one side and 22 on another. You know, uh, we can quantify that data for you. Thank you, brother. That our number one. Uh, Injury type was struck by, and um, analysis of this data leads us to believe it's mostly material handling. Uh, we had some fall in pipe, some inadequate rigging. We also had some hits struck by, meaning hit by rocks in some of the mining activities. Um, we've had some drop materials. We've also had some 
hit by heavy equipment, hit by a backhoe. Um, another, another person was seriously injured. He got st struck by an air comp compressor nozzle. This is mostly related to uh, equipment material handling. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any of the board members have any questions? We're good. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. MTA regional bus, including MTA bus and Long Island bus, Tim Sweeney, Chief Officer of MTA Bus and Training. good year in a lot of respects and a bad year in other respects. Uh, starting with the safety goals and initiatives, the next slide will show our lost time goals. And uh, starting with MTA bus, uh, the lost time goal for MTA bus is 10.20. And I must say that goal is a very high goal. We had a very, very poor year in MTA bus. Uh, you look at the lost time goal for Long Island bus, you can see it's much, much lower, 3.43. And the regional bus combined goal is 5.81. And that includes uh, MTA bus also. Just let me just overview that really quickly. Uh, in, in buses, historically, uh, the accident trends are much, much higher than they are in subways in New York City Transit. Uh, an example would be of recently, about a month ago, I'm not going to mention which bus people would happen that, but one of the unions brought a, they hired a doctor. I'm sorry. One of the unions hired a doctor to come into the bus depot to show the employees how to fill out injury on duty papers. So it's come to the point where bus drivers are claiming injury on duty. Drivers get hurt, and they should claim injury on duty when they're hurt. Uh, but when you have a doctor coming to the bus depot to show people how to fill out an injury on duty paper, and he's hired by the union to come in to do this, and the same doctor who was doing this was recently uh, investigated by New York City Transit's sick investigation unit and indicted for uh, workers' compensation fraud, there's something awry going on. So needless to say, we're, we're fighting an uphill battle when it comes to workers' compensation claim. You know, you have the gamut of people filing claims that are legitimate and people that are filing claims that are of a questionable nature. And you have a doctor coming in. Now, the doctor was on the property. Uh, he should not have been there. We contacted our labor relations department, but... We could not get them, uh, get it validated soon enough to get him removed from the property. So he was there for two shop gates. So these are the type of things that we're trying to, to get cleared up. Uh, so of late, we're having issues like this. And go to the next slide, please. Uh, collision injuries per, uh, per million miles. MTA bus goal for 2010 is 4.25. Uh, they're doing very good on MTA bus. Can, when we merged three or four years ago, this was up in the 6.7 uh, range. Uh, Long Island bus, 2.28. They're doing very well. Uh, that's a great number. We, don't, we can't compare that to previous numbers. Uh, reason being is uh, last year when Long Island bus used their numbers, they didn't calculate numbers the way we do in uh, MTA bus and New York City Transit, so that's kind of a new way to calculate. Uh, combined reasonable bus goal is 5.2, 5.29. Uh, New York City Transit's goal is 5.91. Uh, customer accidents, MTA bus 1.29, Long Island bus is 1.07, and regional bus goal is 1.10. They're all in about the same range, which is, which everybody's doing very good. But I must say that MTA bus has been going down. They had, had the biggest gain last year in 2009. They're the biggest gain out of all the regional bus companies. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, monitoring safety on the road. Now, on this, you can see the, the total number of road observations. Now, this is strictly from the Safety and Training Division up at Zuriga Avenue. Uh, safety sweeps. Now, when we talk safety sweeps, 
This may be someone going on the road, sitting on a street corner for two or three hours and observing buses when they go by. So I'm visually looking at a bus. I'm making sure the driver is not on the cell phone. I'm making sure that he has his seatbelt on. I'm making sure that he's not running a red light. So those are just cursory views. The other ones are actually onboard rides, probationary onboard ride, uh, requested rides from customer complaints, a random onboard ride, uh, performance monitoring program. These are people that have uh, more than three accidents uh, in an 18-month period. And then we also have the people who are involved in serious accidents. So out of those 10,000 rides, uh, 3,000 of them were actually on board for a half hour or more. So that's a pretty substantial number. Now, something that's not up on there, which I think is very impressive, is uh, during 2009, uh, MTA uh, Long Island Bus, we started red letter drills uh, for Long Island Bus. And previous in 2008, Long Island Bus came into our red letter program uh, where they did not attend training at Zuriga Avenue. So where they now attend first line of defense. And during that first line of defense class, they now get training for security awareness. So when we first started red letter drills, Long Island Bus was scoring 20% in their awareness level, uh, whereas MTA Bus and New York City Transit were scoring in the 90 and 95% range. So Long Island Bus has gone from 20 or 25% compliance. Now they're up in the 80 and 90% compliance because of the first line of defense training. So that training really, really helps out. Uh, next slide, please. All right, now, one of the things we're talking about, lost time accidents, and, you know, like I'm saying, it's not, I'm not going to blame uh, everything on the, the poor doctor coming in and giving shop gates. It's not all on his. It's on us also. And to enhance our location safety officer awareness, we're going to, enhance our on-job investigations, uh, talk up personal protective equipment in the uh, depots, uh, shop gates two, three times a month in transportation and maintenance, talk about proactive solutions, what we can do in transportation maintenance administration, uh, uh, location safety officer performance requirements. Actually, our people are going to go into the locations, sit down with them, set goals, parameters, and attainable goals, we're going to evaluate them. If they don't meet our evaluation criteria, we're going to have their AGMs and their general managers evaluate them and take action in a proactive way to either meet the goal or, we're sorry, move on. Uh, monthly follow-up and review sessions, formal annual review for all SO responsibilities, performance targets. All right, we haven't done this of late, and we're doing it now. Uh, next, please. Enhancing overall safety and security, identify bus operators involved in more than one customer injury, and monitor on cover, uh, with undercover rides, uh, maintain echo driving goal and reducing customer injuries, short stops and starts. That's a big deal. We've been doing that, but we have an echo driving film, which we show annually to the drivers during 19A training, uh, installing uh, automatic external defibrillators, at all bus facilities in 2010. Uh, they're on order, and we hope they should be in uh, during this quarter or early in the second quarter. Uh, continue new wheelchair lift video. Uh, and in conjunction with that, they install two mock-ups at Zuriga Avenue, full life-side wheelchair mock-ups where new students and retraining, where we can actually bring the drivers, bring a wheelchair, and we have two wheelchairs and we can actually hook the trainees up into the wheelchair lift and show the actual mock-up. Uh, perform undercover riders for bus operators receiving a, a red light camera or a cell phone <coughs> violation. This is huge. I, I can't, I, I mean, I, I wish I could tell you my, uh, my people will go off, and I, I must admit uh, four or five times a day with who's taken out of service for a cell phone or a red light violation. It's an, you know, it's, we're doing this on a daily basis. So even though we're out there pulling the trigger constantly, we're still finding our own people using cell phones. Uh, the federal government passed a law just in January. Uh, it's a commercial driver's license. If you're caught texting 
by a police officer uh, in a commercial vehicle, it's up to $2,750 in a fine. So we're ready to ask the police to come with us and catch a driver texting, and what a message that would be. My goodness. Uh, next, please. We'll continue to develop procedures, bullets, and directives to mitigate, uh, keep our drivers out of harm's way. Uh, we continue with our BOAC committee, a uh, joint venture with TWU. Uh, we're doing a certified line trainer program for conflict avoidance. Certified line trainer program is where we bring up bus operators who are mutually selected with the union and management. They have good driving record. They have good customer relations skills. We train them over a two-day session, and we pair them up with new bus operators. And when they finish their training at Zuriga and they go to the depots to learn the lines, we pair them up with seasoned operators who we feel will show them the right way to drive and treat customers on the road. Uh, conduct quarterly safety meetings with road ops, AGM to develop accident reduction strategies, uh, installing bus operator barriers, uh, we had that unfortunate incident just over a year ago where the bus operator was killed, and in his depot, uh, they're installing 100 bus operator barriers on the B-46. That's in the process of happening now uh, for a full-line test in the first quarter of 2010. Next. Uh, distracted driver mitigation program, 100% compliance with restrictions on pages, cell phones, hands-free devices, focus enforcement. That's where we're at there. We have our sweeps ongoing uh, on a weekly basis. We have mini sweeps. We have full sweeps. Uh, where possible, we'll seek cooperation from our partners in labor. Uh, I can't tell you how uh, the union is so with us on this that they tell the operators, it's on you. We can't help you. If you're using your cell phone, don't use your cell phone. They're with us 100%. But operators are still picking up their cell phone. What's the penalty if you're caught using your cell phone driving the bus with passengers? The first one is that we have a stipulation for a, the first one is a reprimand. Uh, the second one is it's, we go out of, it's not progressive. We'll go up to a five-day, and the second one could be up to a 20-day, you know, right up. There is no progression on cell phones. The first one is a reprimand. And the second one is out of progression. The third one is 30 days, whatever it may be. There is no progression. So why? It's, why? Why? Because it's that serious. Because people can die when you're on a cell phone. And it has happened. Uh, in fact, when it's so serious on a cell phone that the Public Transportation Safety Board now has the, uh, they've enacted a procedure where if one of our bus drivers is involved in a fatal accident, they subpoena uh, his or her cell phone records to rule out cell phone usage during the incident. But don't you think progressive discipline would be more, I guess, uh, constructive? Because, you know, for example, a person gets caught using their cell phone, there's no passengers on the bus. That person gets a 30-day rip. A person that got caught using their cell phone had 20 passengers on the bus, they get a five-day rip. I'm asking you. Stipulation, there's already signed stipulations to the effect of, you know. All right. Go ahead. Uh, training conducted annually. Uh, newly promoted supervisors come up and learn the uh, 19A bus operator refresher course so they know what's going on on the road. Expand IOD training at Zuriga with hands-on refreshers at facilities. Maintain fleet-specific training for all bus models. Ensure case study fatality video is viewed at all new hires and as a refresher. Uh, complete phase one, first line of defense, uh, and kick off phase two in September 2010. Uh, refine conflict resolution training for all bus operators based on new lessons learned, uh, recommendations from internal as well as external so sources. Uh, next, please. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Well, let, let me ask you a question, Tim. Um, how long have you been with MTA doing this? 
Uh, it's well, I've been in Zuriga Avenue now for the last two and a half years or so. Two and a half years? Yes, sir. And for the city for MTA? Is 32 it? years. 32 years. Well, everyone, Tim Sweeney expects to retire prior to the June meeting, so let's thank him for doing what he's done for us so well. Thank you. Good luck to you in your next career, man. I hope I don't uh, meet up with you. Do you know what it is? It's yeah. nursing. Yeah. Congratulations Thank to you, you, man. That's a, a good thing, man. He's going to be a nurse, yeah, under that new Obama thing, you know. <laughs> 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 He's going right into health care. Well, man, there must be a lot of money in that these days. He just jumped ship on us, right? <laughs> what do you know that we don't know? Not a lot of money in it. No? No. Well, it's a passion that you have. Yeah. God bless you for it. That's a good look, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, New York uh, City Transit, uh, Cheryl Kennedy, Vice President of Safety Systems and Security. You're up. Good afternoon. Uh, first, I'm going to go over our 2010 safety goals and then the significant safety programs. The New York City Transit Employee Lost Time Accident Rate Goal for 2010 is 2 point. 72 lost time accidents per 100 employees, and that's a 5% reduction from the 2009 year-end rate. Uh, New York City Transit also experienced an increase in 2009. We had a 17.7% increase in lost time accident rate. Uh, both buses and subways had an, had an increase, and the two highest categories were slip, trip, and falls and overexertion. The Department of Subway's customer safety goal is 3.20 customer injuries per million customers, and that's a 3% reduction from the 2009 actual. Department of Buses' customer safety goal is 5.91 collisions per injuries, uh, collision injuries per million miles, and 1.06 accident injuries per million customers. These also represent a 3% reduction from the 2009 year-end rate. Next slide. Now I'll start on our significant safety programs. The 2010 Bus Customer Accident Reduction Program involves increasing bus operator and customer awareness by developing and distributing safety-related posters, brochures, car cards uh, on buses and in depots. Some examples of some of the things that we're going to do is uh, focus on using the rear door to exit, seasonal safety tips, watching traffic, when you are exiting, distracted driving hazards and kneeling the bus for the customers. Providing automated customer safety announcements on buses. They're regarding boarding and alighting, safety trips, tips in and around the bus. Also identifying bus operators involved in more than one customer injuries and monitoring them throughout undercover rides. That's something Tim discussed. The Department of Buses Collision Reduction Program involves continuing to perform random undercover rides. We performed approximately 400 undercover rides a year uh, within the Department of Buses. They also are looking at distracted driving and red light, passing the red light, and we're looking at increasing that oversight. And Ms. Kennedy, let yes. me ask you, what is the disciplinary process when they're caught with it's the same as the as same Tim. no progressive discipline just right. yes any way you want to go right okay conducting quarterly safety meetings with road operations with the AGMs to uh, develop accident reduction strategies maintaining fleet specific training for all bus models some of the buses have various mirrors and different bus layouts, so they get training on all the types of buses. Conduct enforcement campaigns to ensure that bus operators comply with the pager, cellular phone, and hands-free device restrictions. Next slide. The Department of Subways uh, 2010 Customer Accident Reduction Programs involve conducting preventative maintenance procedures on our elevators, escalators, and power walks. Reducing subway fires by performing track cleaning within and outside of station limits, and correctly prioritizing our station inspection findings and making sure they're uh, corrected in a timely fashion, and conducting slip, trip, and fall customer awareness campaign because that still is our highest accident category. Next slide. The 2010 employee safety programs for all 
operating and support departments involve <coughs> implementing safety goal and action plans. System safety developed safety goal action plan guidelines and we've been using them for years and they've been very successful. They address safety communication, audit inspections, accident investigations, training, safety rules and committees, monitoring employee safety performance. So every department or division has their own safety goal action plan. They perform the functions in the field. They send their status reports to my office system safety and we also do auditing to make sure that they are completing, uh, complying with their plan. Next slide. The 2010 employee safety programs for the Department of Buses involve the Bus Operator Action Committee, which consists of bus operators and management, and they meet quarterly to identify solutions for problems faced by bus operators and customers. They worked on safety bulletins, conflict resolution training, and the bus operator barrier prototype last year. Also, hazard assessments on high-frequency accidents to identify causal factors and corrective actions. We're going to be looking at bus operators experiencing slip, trip, and fall accidents and overexertion accidents. And we're performing job safety analysis on the bus operator tasks. Next slide. We also have a system safety outreach program in which we're going to be going out to six depots with the highest accident rates that were identified in 2009 and assisting them to implement their safety program. We meet with management to identify their deficiencies and give them input into their accident reduction efforts. We also will evaluate the implementation of their corrective measures. Next slide. We will also have an outreach program for the subway side focusing on the IRT West group first and that involves the number one, two, three and seven lines. We also are going to meet with management to identify areas where we can assist them. We'll also provide instruction to management in selected areas and assist in implementing their programs. The outreach programs focus on the system safety goal action plan, safety inspections, job task assessments, accident investigations, safety policy instructions, and conducting safety meetings, safety signage, hazardous waste and injury follow-up. So all those things will have my staff in system safety out in those de depots and also IRT West to do those various things. Next slide. The 2010 employee safety program for the Department of Subways involved hazard assessments on high frequency accidents to identify causal and corrective measures and we're going to be looking at station cleaners experiencing overexertion accidents train operators experiencing slip, trip, fall accidents, and that involves uh, performing job safety analysis on cleaner and train operators tasks. Next slide. Also we're going to be continuing our joint system safety TW audits on track work along the right of way, and they're conducted three nights a week. We also have a system safety investigation of potential employee train contact contact their near-miss incidents, joint labor management pre-job safety inspections for large-scale track maintenance and track construction projects, a survey of over 2,600 track switches to identify the proper flagging at those locations so they'll know up front when they're set out to do a particular job what type of flagging they'll need, and standard flagging training for all flaggers. So that that's, concludes my presentation. Any questions, Ms. Kennedy? If, if I may, um, I understand um, what and how serious it is for someone to be texting or talking on the phone when carrying uh, passengers around the city or the state of New York or Long Island, wherever it is. I understand 100 percent. I'm hopeful that there could be a policy or procedure as far as progressive discipline is concerned. And the, re the reason why I say that is because um, in my other life, when I'm not doing what I'm doing right here, I'm the president of a, a union. And progressive discipline is important because it rules out discrimination if you were to get five days and another person next to you was to get 15 days or 20 days. It, 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 
it can open up Pandora's box. So if there's a policy and procedure in writing as to what's going to happen and how it's going to happen, mm -hmm. it makes more sense than to open yourself up to just someone making an allegation against you saying, he didn't like the way I look today, so I got 20 days, and someone who committed the same infraction only got five days. Mm -hmm. But if there's a policy and procedure in place as to what the discipline action is and the penalty that is required for such violations, it does not open up the MTA to any um, unnecessary lawsuits, if you will, in litigation that we have to go through. Well, they haven't broken down into what they call minor violations and major violations. So a second cell phone violation would fall into a major violation category. So labor relations and legal, they have that all worked out already. Okay. If you say so, Doctor. <laughs> I, I wanted to say that. <laughs> okay, Long Island Railroad. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Dotto, representing Long Island Railroad System Safety. Um, as always, we're striving for zero accidents on the railroad. Our employee injury rate goal for 2010 is 2.05 per 100,000 hours worked, and our customer injury rate goal is 5.22 per million customers. In 2010, we're going to enhance the programs that, that we have proven successful and introduce some new in initiatives to meet, reach our goals. Uh, we have departmental safety committees that meet monthly. They are rep represented by management and labor representatives and provides a, a forum for labor and management to get together and uh, voice safety concerns. We also have an employee safety incentive program. Uh, Cross-functional department committee votes on uh, each submission for an award. Um, it, it, we're trying to uh, enhance employees' buy-in at the, at, the, at the departmental level to increase productivity and safety. Um, we also have a de uh, departmental joint management and labor safety committee where management supervision and labor representatives from every discipline at the railroad get together and uh, they discuss any safety issues that arise. Um, representatives from system safety is also attend and make sure that uh, any, any safety problems or trends that are identified are are uh, brought to mitigation. Um, we're also introducing a job task hazard assessment program. It's a long time in the making. We finally have our training department uh, put together a training program for our employees. It's going to be a computer-based training with an exam at the end. And uh, the, if you need to achieve a 75% or better, and then you are considered trained on job task hazard assessments and will be, will be expected to perform job task hazard assessments on um, tasks that you supervise. Um, we look to have sometime in the future every task at the railroad have a job task hazard assessment done so that hazards associated with those job tasks are identified and mitigated to, to the extent possible. Um, we've also instituted an employee reporting hotline. It's basically a, an automatic operator, um, voice prompted, if an, if an employee notes something amiss, something is wrong, they can call this one phone number and they'll be directed to the to correct department to have the, the problem corrected. Um, it's been a great help to our movement bureau, which was at first the, uh, the central phone number for everybody to call into, and it's just too busy to handle all these calls. Um, next, we also have uh, what's called the SEPTA committee the uh, Committee for Evaluation and Prevention of Train Accidents. They meet monthly. So if they participated, if participants from Long Island Railroad, Metro North, and New York and Atlantic Railroad, a tenant uh, freight railroad on, on, the, on our tracks, they go over accident trends and also try to come up with any kind of mitigative actions. They benchmark the industry. It's, just, it's another, uh, another forum to, to uh, identify any kind of accidents and uh, improve our safety on the railroad. Um, we've also come up with climbing on and off equipment campaign because it was identified as one of our, our uh, high accident. In, during our gap mitigation, we extended the threshold plates on our M7 equipment and um, unintentionally increased the risk of uh, climbing employees on, on, the, on our trains. They were injuring their legs, um, having all kinds of overexertion injuries, trying to avoid that extended threshold plate. So we've had that. We, we uh, produced a video. We've put out some uh, posters. We're trying to come up with the best way, the best ergonomic way to, to mitigate that problem. Um, we've also instituted an indoors pro program because we've had a lot of employees being injured uh, going through our M7 indoors. We have an ergonomic study under underway to try to identify the best way to, to alleviate that. Um, 
we're stepping up our, our equipment periodic inspections to make sure that there are no maintenance issues that result, that, that result in injuries, and we're focusing on job safety briefings to bring awareness up on our employees. Um, our vegetation management has been doing a great job this year. We've, um, our brush fires have, have, have gone down significantly since the previous year. Um, <coughs> Our brush fire hazard assessment, as, as that was one of our uh, recommendations that came out of that. We've been able to identify problem areas. We've um, instituted um, uh, flag days. We have a color-coded system. Every, when we have a, it's basically kind of a, a danger warning. When we have a, certain risk levels, we'll have certain implementation come, in, come into play to make sure that we, uh, we water down. Where, where we, when we had the... the um, the golf tournament, we would actually have a tanker on site. We could water down the right away when it was a really dry day, things like that. Um, we also have the right away task force, and probably the, we have a pol MTA police officer and a system safety officer that, are, that identify problems along the right away. Um, they, they'll find trespass, any kind of high risk behavior, and uh, prioritize installation of high security fencing. Um, we have an officer also that's dedicated to our tracks program. It's a community outreach program that has reached over 134,000 participants in 2009 and 750,000 in the last five years. Um, our Operation Lifesaver also is a, a conjunction between the police department and system safety where we'll identify high-risk crossings, for instance, and uh, we'll, we'll try to identify high-risk behavior of passengers going across when they're not supposed to be going that. We, uh, we, we hand out flyers and stick things on windshields trying to get people to obey the law not to cross our crossings when the gates are down or stay away from the flat, from platform edges, things like that, any other risky behavior. Um, we've actually experienced a 13% reduction in our customer accidents compared to 2008. Um, we've used hazard assessment techniques to reduce those customer accidents and a customer accident database developed capable of manipulation so that we can actually identify those trends and target them for mitigation. Um, we've had an extensive public awareness campaign when it came to our GAP accidents. We have a, gas, a GAP task force with, uh, that's comprised of our president, senior staff, and computer counsel, MTA board. We have a GAP incident subcommittee that, that uh, investigates any kind of a GAP incident that we have, try to make sure that medication measures are, are appropriate. Um, we're at the point now where we're just trying to influence customer behavior. It's, it's, um, we've, we've done many of the engin we've engineered out as many of the problems that we, that we can at the moment. The Customer Safety Committee is a multidisciplinary committee that meets quarterly. We, uh, we discuss all customer accidents and try to identify trends since the last meeting, and uh, we try to bring action through, through that committee since we have representation from, from each department. Um, we have seat drops on our trains that we target customer awareness literature. We have Escalator Safety Week where we station people around the Everace Escalator, try to um, educate our customers on the dangers of, of the um, escalators and any kind of risky behavior, try to mitigate that. Um, that concludes my presentation. If there are any questions. Does the board have any questions? Any questions for this brother? No? Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Uh, bridges and tunnels? Good afternoon. Where is it? My name is Rob Jurassic. I'm the safety manager for Bridges and Tunnels. I'll be discussing the 2010 safety goals in the employee and customer safety programs. Next. First thing I wanted to uh, point out that BNT achieved its goal for 2009 with 2.6 employee lost time injuries, which is 7.7 percent better than the goal. The goal last year was 2.8, so our employee 2010 safety goals will be reduced by 5% to 2.5 lost time incidents for 200,000 hours work. Our employee safety programs are communication is key to get the safety message out, convene regularly scheduled meetings to develop joint initiatives, continue with incident investigations by supervisory personnel. Communicate on prevention of injuries through roll call discussions of safety items, toolbox and safety meetings, safety interactions, and safety time newsletter. We'll continue with quarterly meetings at, at each facility with management, discuss new safety action plan initiatives as they apply to each facility, address site-specific safety concerns, and the best safety practices are shared with all facilities, 
standardized work tools, equipment, procedures, and training to ensure the highest quality is attained. We'll conduct timely incident investigations and employee interviews, document the root, root causes, and circulate actions to assist in tracking trends. We're going to generate work orders to perform corrective actions to address the root cause of the injury. Our customer 2010 safety goals are to reduce the total collisions per million vehicles to less than 4.65 and to reduce the collisions with injuries per million vehicles to 0.91. And although last year these two rates were a little higher, uh, we still had the lowest number of collisions ever reported with 1,440 collisions and, this, and also the lowest number of collisions with injuries ever reported with 283 collisions with injuries. The customer safety improvements, we're going we're to have technology and signage, traffic control focusing on safety and lighting. We're going to expand the use of weather sensor technology. We have five new roadway sensors that were added to the weather system, four at the Barrazano and one at the Bronx Whitestone. We're going to continue installation of programmable variable message signs to advise customers of real-time road conditions, provide safety messages. Uh, and we have uh, seven variable message signs that were installed in 2009, four at the Barrazano and three at the RFK Bridge. We're going to have um, four of them installed in 2010. Two at the Drogs Neck, one at the RFK, and one at the uh, Queens Midtown Tunnel. We're going to continue expansion with the number of programmable variable speed limit signs, and they can be changed at a remote location based on conditions on a bridge, such as inclement weather and high winds. And we're going to continue with 16 planned installations at the Barrazano and RFK bridges. Our traffic control, focusing on safety, we um, the leading causes of accidents are unsafe lane changes, speeding, and following too closely. So our enforcement unit is going to be um, focusing their attention on aggressive driving behaviors. Uh, our special operations unit will meet weekly with uh, the police department and review stats and help identify and target problem areas. Our truck enforcement unit is going to focus on unsafe and overweight vehicles. A pilot program is underway on the uh, roadway LED lights, uh, which, are, which has six new fixtures installed at the Verrazano and five new fixtures installed at the Drogs Neck for testing and evaluation. The LED lights use 30 watts of power to give off the equivalent light of a traditional 100 watt light, uh, therefore increasing the energy savings. They last longer, therefore less, less trips are needed to go up for the workers. Uh, to go up on the bridge to change the light bulbs, therefore less accidents due to roadway closures and reduce the inconvenience to customers. Uh, they reduce pollution, no hazardous materials involved like mercury and the high pressure sodium lights. Uh, they burn more efficiently while reducing our energy consumption and reduction of waste disposal. Some additional be benefits of the necklace LED lighting are work crews won't have to make as many trips up the bridge's main cables, which is where the necklace lights are located. The necklace LED lights fixtures weigh about half as much as the old 60-pound fixtures. And we're about 100% completion at the Barrazano Bridge and 33% complete at the RFK Bridge. The Throgs Neck and the Bronx Whitestone is scheduled to start in 2011. And the rest are the charts. We have uh, 47, uh, which is the number of employee lost time incidents. Next is the frequency rate at 2.6 um, per 200 hours, 200,000 hours worked. Next is the employee lost time incident by work group. The bridges and tunnel officers are the largest, followed by maintenance, then sergeants and lieutenants. And we have the uh, Employee lost time injury by type. Uh, 2008, we had a large slip, trip, and fall. And uh, in 2009, we had a lot of other uh, injuries, which include the stung, stung by insect, bitten by a motorist during an arrest, electrical shock, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a lot of <laughs> other rash. <laughs> bitten of by motorists. Huh? <laughs>
<laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Tetanus shots. How many cases did you have bitten by motors? Just one. Just one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank goodness. That's why well, you, well, you had to put them on the that's other. That's good news, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> and uh, we had uh, 283 number of customer incidents with injury. Next is the frequency rate for the customer with incidents per 1 million vehicles. And lastly is the frequency rate of customer injuries per million vehicle by facility. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Let me, let me ask one question. You don't have, um, uh, like, the, uh, I guess it's the radio frequency set up that when you're approaching the bridge, you can turn your radio station to, let's say, 1,700 on the AM dial and get uh, update, updated traffic information, right, on, like, the bridges and tunnels? In the tunnels we do, yes. In the tunnels, we can know. we can interrupt actually on any frequency at any time for an emergency uh, message. Okay, yeah. but not on the bridges. But not on the bridges. No. Thank you. Where are we at now? Metro North. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Campbell, the Chief Safety and Security Officer for Metro North, and I'll be making the presentation today. Uh, starting off our uh, 2010 goals, um, as you can see, our lost time frequency of 1.3 and a restricted duty frequency of 0.5 the, uh, for a total of 1.8. And our 2010 <coughs> customer safety goal is three injuries per million rides. Um, 2009 was a difficult year for us. We, we did. Uh, we had a tremendous year in 2008 um, with uh, – very large reductions, and we did give back a significant part of that gain last year. So I thought it was appropriate to put that into a kind of long-term perspective here, and um, this is basically our injury reduction experience since uh, we became Metro North in 1983. Our total injuries are down 86 percent during that period, and our FRA reportable cases down 74 percent, and lost time cases down 79 percent. Last year was the fifth time in our history where we've had a setback in the long-term downward trend, and each time previously we managed to turn around and continue um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, that downward path. So we're working hard to make that happen again this year. Some of our uh, – Catherine? Um, and sorry. the January record was a good start. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't take that to the bank yet, but we appreciate the comment. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of our key objectives for 2010 for improving our safety program, which we call Priority One, are increasing the focus on human factor causes of accidents, that is the unsafe behaviors, um, and at the same time promoting safe behavior. Um, we in particularly want to focus on our local and district uh, committees, employee committees, to plan initiatives to accomplish that. And as a part of that, we want to increase the communication and coordination between the safety committees we have at all levels, which I'll address more in a moment. Um, we also want to continue to proactively look at risk reduction initiatives in key operational areas. Over the last few years, um, we have begun to uh, do assessments about the uh, what-ifs of things that might happen and try to take uh, countermeasures against those things proactively. And we've had, uh, we think, some good success with that. And we want to continue doing that not only after we have an accident, but hopefully before we have an accident to prevent one. Some of the specific things that we're going to do, there are four things listed here that, that, will, um, that are specific implementations of the objectives I just mentioned. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of those later, so we can just Go to the next slide, I think. And um, before I move on, I wanted to touch on a few things um, that we're doing as a part of our overall program. Uh, in 2008, 2009, we had uh, some success working with partners in New York State and local communities, uh, making some uh, critical safety improvements at a couple of our great crossings in New York. We've now replicated that strategy in the state of Connecticut, and we did an assessment, and we've identified um, six locations that we want to focus on for grade crossing improvements, and we'll be working in 2010 
with our partners both in New York State and Connecticut and hopefully in the local communities to implement safety improvements at the targeted crossings. Um, we also, as part of that proactive risk reduction, initiated reviews of several um, uh, safety-related work procedures, in particular ones designed to keep employees and trains separated from one another. So uh, we are going to be implementing the recommendations from those roadway worker protection and blue signal protection reviews. Um, we've been working closely with our capital um, division within Metro North. We have had, a, I think, a really robust safety program related to contractor work for a long time. Um, and this year, um, we think the Capital Division uh, took a significant step forward. They have their own internal safety action plan um, that we think is going to um, enhance and reinforce all of the um, measures we already had in place, work, working with both the OSIP people and with the, our own contracts people and with the Safety Department personnel who focus in that area. Um, we have several people um, working on um, industry-wide and federal safety initiatives. Um, there's a lot of activity right now in the industry at the national level, and um, Metro North people are participating actively to help shape um, future regulations so that they're not only effective but practical for us to implement also. And then lastly, um, in these tight fiscal times, we're looking for additional ways to recognize safety success. Um, we have had a modest incentive program for a long time that's primarily focused on celebrating successes locally at a modest level, and we want to look for additional things that we uh, can use to, again, reinforce good safety performance at the work group and departmental levels. So. The next chart shows uh, we kind of used to depict our overall um, Safety One priority program. Um, it's basically the, the blueprint, if you will, for how we manage safety at Metro North. And I just highlighted in purple there the areas that we're going to be focusing on this year. So you'll notice a lot of emphasis on the left side of the chart in safety organizations. We have a kind of a structure that overlays our regular um, organization chart um, really to focus on safety, and that includes a senior safety committee chaired by the president and then on down through a steering committee, um, district committees in each of our six operating districts, as well as numerous local committees that are comprised primarily of um, craft employees. So uh, thank you. If uh, the one area that uh, we're going to add this year is focusing on work groups. Um, this sounded actually very similar to what um, Cheryl mentioned at Transit. Um, we've looked at the accident experience of work groups across the company and kind of created a frequency index for them so we could compare apples to apples across big groups and small groups. And we've identified those that have higher than average accident rates. And we're going to be working with them uh, to develop initiatives that are specific to that work group. And we had a lot of success with this last year in two areas where we piloted it. We work with a, with a cross-section of employees from the work group as well as supervision and management, basically all in the room together, assessing the injury, injury experience in the work group and brainstorming initiatives for that work group specifically, and then letting them come up with uh, the commitment to implement those um, actions in the work group. We piloted in two groups last year. Um, the initial reaction was very favorable, and we're going to expand that and continue it this year. Um, we continue to emphasize job safety briefings as one of the linchpins of our program. Um, that's the discussion basically between members of a work group or uh, foremen and workers at the start of every job that really sets the tone for that job and communicates safety critical information. Um, and we are uh, last year implemented a new form for documenting roadway worker briefings. Uh, we're going to be auditing that to make sure it's being <laughs> utilized. Um, and we're going to be a additionally develop a new form to implement some improvements that were recommended by some of the people who participated in our review in this area to be used particularly with our employees who are protecting contractors. On the um, local safety committee initiatives, we have um, met with all of the, the chairpersons of the local safety committees who are all craft employees. Um, we um, had an initial information sharing session, listened to their concerns. Um, talked to them about our objectives for this year and really got a very good feedback from them on their willingness to work with us um, to develop some peer-to-peer -peer interactions for them to participate in 
to influence the um, behavior of the employees in their um, districts. So um, we're actually working now with um, three of those committees initially to develop, again, committee-specific initiatives um, that the local committee members will help us implement and hopefully implement themselves, uh, again, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, and again, primarily focusing on the actions of people. Historically, the local safety committees have uh, tended to focus on, on conditions and, and reporting hazards to us, and we think we're seeing diminishing returns with that approach, um, and we're really hoping now that they can be as effective in helping us influence behavior as well as they have been in cleaning up the railroad and eliminating hazards and so forth. So, um, One of the themes we want to use in support of that, we introduced uh, actually the year before last and we continue to expand the use of, is this I am a lifesaver theme. Um, basically trying to get across the idea that um, you're not breaking somebody's chops when you're uh, in, uh, talking to them about safety and you might um, interrupt their work or speak to them to correct their unsafe acts. Um, and uh, we're um, basically using this as a way to kind of create a base of uh, baseline culture that makes it acceptable for people to um, interact with one another about safety problems. So. On the customer safety side, um, we have a list of initiatives um, ranging from uh, mileposts and um, several other uh, methods that we use to communicate customer safety messages, um, our station um, renovation and repair programs, the inspection and maintenance and the response to conditions we find during those inspections and maintenance uh, uh, activities, our gap mitigation program, um, our safety announcements, both on board and in stations, um, and the work that we do for emergency preparedness planning, um, primarily um, running training and exercises with and for local first responders. So I'll just touch on those in a little more depth. Um, I think Cheryl mentioned that slip, trip, fall continued to be uh, the most prevalent cause of accidents. That's true for us and our customers. So last year we initiated a campaign that we'll be continuing on putting your best foot forward. It was developed in-house uh, by our corporate media relations people, and we think it's pretty eye-catching, and we've actually given it a, uh, a seasonal component. Uh, you see the winter version here with the popsicle toes theme. But uh, we looked both in <coughs> Grand Central and outside, and slip, trip, fall is the key issue, so a lot of our communication focuses on that. Uh, we do have an extensive program of station inspection and maintenance. Um, I'd like to think that we're very good at responding to conditions that are both reported by customers and others and that are found by our own inspectors. And in addition to that, um, the on ongoing capital investment we have, um, we think, reaps great rewards in terms of improved conditions at stations, um, improving lighting, reducing um, slipping hazards, better walking surfaces, and so on and so forth. So we have the new Yankee Stadium station on the uh, right-hand side there. Even though it's a brand-new station, a whole new operation for us, we had this season uh, one uh, cut finger uh, was the only accident experience we had at Yankee Stadium station. So um, We continue with emphasizing our onboard and in-station safety announcements, again, focusing on slip, trip, fall and uh, weather-related cautions in particular on days when it's wet or, or uh, there's frozen precip on the ground, and, in, and also focusing on any operational changes if we're running left-handed or anything that might cause customers to have to dash at the last moment to make a change turns out to be problematic, so we try to address that. And then lastly, um, we continue to emphasize um, uh, emergency preparedness and training exercises. We're planning in 2010 to run a full-scale exercise in Grand Central. Um, we do training for over 500 local first responders each year throughout our service territory, and we participate in numerous local and regional exercises, um, usually in conjunction with the MTA PD and the uh, ICTF. With that, um, I'd be glad to answer any questions on the charts that are in the book. Anybody have any questions? I think that you, you guys, all of you that made a presentation, very good presentations, because what's going to happen is that as we move down the road with the way things are going and the budgets and everything else, safety and security is going to be like the number one top priority because things are going to get so tight that the chairman is going to look to you guys to 
ensure that the passengers are, you know, moving to where they need to get to safely and, and securely because that's going to be a major problem. So I, I'm speaking for myself and I guess the other board members are saying that the presentations that you've made are all good presentations and, you know, you should just commend yourselves on, on the job that you're doing because I'm, I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy, safety and security. I know it's not. But um, I know that, you know, you could get from uh, two accidents to one. I know you, you, I mean, you could try. I can't say you can. Doctor, am I right or wrong? You know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, you know. But it's, a, it's, it's tough, man. But I want to thank you for what you do, you know. Um, we're going to go to uh, Chief Cohen in a second. But before that, I just want to throw this out there that, As we, as we get closer uh, to the end of the year, you know, we're going, we're going to be, well, I'm going to be looking for uh, suggestions on what you need to make your area work better for you. Because I know you, they want you to do safety and security, but nobody wants to give you money for it. So I'm the first one saying I want to give you money for it. They're spending money for everything else. I want to make sure that you have what you need because if you have the money to do what it is that you need to do, then that means the lawsuits that we get hit with every time you turn around drop so we don't have those problems. So if you need to, to hit me up later on and talk to me and say, listen, Norm, I need a few dollars here, let me know because Chief Cohen, he gets like $15 million every time he comes in. We just <laughs> give it to him, man, him and his canine unit. <laughs> That's on the record, brother. I'll give it to you, man. Go ahead, Chief. Do your thing, man. Okay, good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about 09, uh, the safety initiatives and, and the crime reductions and, and programs, and I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing uh, in 2010. I know, I know we're running late, so I'll, I'll attempt to be quick. Um, we continue to do the train order maintenance sweeps. Last year we conducted 92. This year we're going to look to break uh, over 100. We hook up with the MTA. PD and the NYPD, and, and we hit very high traffic volume stations, and we flooded with officers. Uh, we also do the multi-agency super surge. We did eight of those in 09. Uh, we're on track to do one a month this year, uh, so we should do at least 12. Those are a little bigger than the, the TOMS. Uh, we involve uh, ourselves, NYPD, Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, and Port Authority, as well as uh, the National Guard, and we will show up at uh, Penn Station, Grand Central, uh, we've done we've done them in Atlantic Avenue and we've done them in Staten Island as well, and uh, we'll we'll put between the three agencies between you know 50 and 100 offices will flood that, those stations. Um, next slide, please. Um, some of this is redundant from 08 and then uh, into 09. We, we we've continued the NIMS training. Everyone has been trained in that. Um, that that's for incident response uh, for the national incident. Uh, we response system, uh, incident management system, the proactive terrorist recognition, interdiction operations, and tactics training. Um, we completed that last year with 637 all of, uh, officers uh, trained in that. Uh, th these officers uh, are, are trained uh, to look at signs of someone who may be uh, in the operational mode of uh, either a crime or a terrorist act. Uh, and we, we have stopped individuals with that um, and, and then ran them through. Uh, databases and, and and we've had some uh, some minimal success with that. It's it's actually a very good program. Um, one of the big changes for 09 and which is going to continue in 2010 after Mumbai, we started training uh, the the district police officers in the MP5s. You may see them at Penn Station. You may see them at Grand Central with the heavy weapons. We have 47 district officers. These officers are not assigned to a specialized unit. They are housed at Penn Station, and they are housed at Grand Central. So we have 47 of those officers trained in addition to nine emergency service officers that are trained in the heavy weapons. That allows me to deploy at the larger stations pr pretty much 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, you know, whenever, whenever we need it. We, we continue with CPR, AED uh, uh, training, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a slide or two. Next slide. We'll continue in... With the step-ons, um, we had over 122,000 in 09. We're going to continue those in uh, 2010. One of the big differences, we, we went from a directed patrol mode in 09 to a two-person patrol uh, due to issues with our radio. 
uh, but we didn't we didn't really have a fallback on the numbers and, and the vis- visibility. So uh, I'm pleased to say that, and we also were able to continue uh, with a large amount of direct patrols. Only we went from uh, using it uh, with groups of say uh, two, four, six, and eight to uh, two-person patrol mainly, except on a few of the lines. We still continue to put uh, four to eight police officers on a direct patrol. So we're going to continue doing that in 2010. Um, next slide. Um, the, the, uh, the radiological detection devices, um, we, we've increased this in, in, uh, from 08 to 09. We increased this dramatically, and uh, we're continuing to deploy that in, in 2010. We have 321 officers are trained with this device, and we're continuing to train everyone. We probably, by the end of 2010, everyone will have been trained in it. And we have uh, just the, just on the 350 of these devices deployed department-wide. They're in every region, as well as with our specialty units, canine, highway, and the emergency service officers. Um, by the, as, I, as I mentioned, by the end of the year, we should have everyone trained us. And we have other devices that we're using, but these right now are at, are at the districts. They're, they're used on patrol on a daily basis. Next slide. The defibrillator program continues. In 2009, we replaced all of our defibrillators with, uh, with new devices. We did have success. Uh, we we uh, utilized it um, I believe, well, I, I know we had uh, six saves in 06, I mean in 09, and I don't, I don't have the number of times that we, uh, that we utilized. I'm sorry, 11 times in 09 with uh, six saves. Um, and, and I say that because um, having come from the NYPD where we, where we had these, and, and we, we didn't have the amount of success that we have with them here. Uh, and we have, you know, smaller numbers of the defibrillators. But I think it's because the close proximity, they're at the stations, uh, they're in the cars, and, and we do get to deploy them. And uh, some of the people have actually uh, written letters and, and come back, and, and we, we've had some really great stories. Um, we're continuing. We, train, we retrain on those. Uh, every two years, everyone is recertified in those defibs. Um, we, we can go to the next slide. Vehicle accidents were down 37 percent from 08 to 09. Uh, hopefully that trend continues. A couple of things we're doing. We have the defensive driving course that we started last year. Uh, we're doing that up in uh, Randall's Island. Anyone who has an accident has to go to that course and get retrained. We also provide the accident reduction course to police officers and, and their families uh, while, while they're in the off-duty time. Uh, that they can get a reduction in their insurance and encourage them to drive safe both on duty and off off duty. But one of the big things that we started to do in 09 was we took the uh, each district, the district with the highest amount of accidents. Uh, we would shuffle the cars and they would get the oldest cars, and the districts with the newest with with the lowest amount of accidents would get the newer cars. Uh, so finally, the one district uh, I won't mention who that had the majority of accidents. Um, they were a big part of that reduction because they wanted to get new cars and they didn't want the old uh, old jalopies. But we're going to continue to do that. It's it's uh, it was very very effective. Uh, next slide. Um, this slide the big the big jump from 27 to 49 in the lost time due to line of injuries because um, this year we added in not only the service related injuries but the service related individuals who are back to work on restricted duty. Uh, so the actual number was an increase as well, but it was 37 service-related injuries uh, compared to 27. The other 12 are um, people who have come back to work and they're working restricted duty. Uh, out of those 37, 22, the, 22 of those were arrest-related, although I don't think anyone was bitten, and 11 of those were just in the normal performance of duty, and five of those were from vehicle accidents. Um, Two things that we're doing is uh, we, we're revamping the service-related injury policy. Um, we do a comprehensive review of each case. A supervisor will will uh, review it as it happens. We take photographs of the officers and we uh, we review the the medical paperwork and then we follow up with that individual and the individual's doctors if, if necessary um, to make sure they're getting the proper care and then to get them back to work either full duty or restricted duty. Uh, the second thing that we're trying to do is just to streamline the disability retirement application. I've got a number of officers, unfortunately, were injured and are never going to uh, recover to come back to full duty. And what we're trying to do is to streamline that 
that uh, retirement app, uh, application, and uh, so we can hire you know new new officers uh, full duty and who who can actually come back to work. Um, the next slide. Uh, calls for service went down just slightly, 142,000 to 134,000. Um, it's um, as, again, it's just five percent. I'm actually glad when the calls go down because with the advent of cell phones, we tend to get many 911 calls throughout every police department. Went up drastically over the last 10 or 15 years because instead of one person calling 911, now 10 people do. So I'm happy actually when it, when it goes down, the calls for service. The next slide. Uh, we continue to use the trace detection bag screenings um, as a tool not only for crime but for uh, preventative terrorism measures as well. well. We have 10 devices that are deployed now. Uh, as you can see from the numbers, we, we screened about 12,000 bags. Uh, last year we're continuing to do that this year, and we should be adding, uh, we should be doubling the number of devices in 2010. We were uh, fortunate enough to get some grant money, and uh, we are purchasing uh, new machines as, as we speak. The next slide. Uh, Pleased to say last year crime was down 20 percent. Virtually every, every category except felony assault saw a decrease. Um, and I'm pleased to say that through uh, February this year we're, we're down an additional uh, 4 percent. Um, I believe this is reflective of the, uh, the two-person patrol strategy to continue direct the patrol and uh, the de deployment of the offices. Uh, we had a, a lot of success in the bigger terminals with uh, with larcenies and petty larcenies, and uh, part of that's the canine and the, uh, believe it or not, the MP5. I think the deployment, I think, drove the numbers down. Um, so we're, we're pleased and, and pleased that it's continuing. The next uh, slide, uh, arrests were about the same, uh, 09 to 08, uh, despite the, uh, the reduction in crime, which, which is actually a good sign for me. That it, just, it shows that the, uh, the officers aren't holding back. They're not... Um, and they're continuing to be aggressive when needed and, and, and arrest offenders. The, the next, where we go, okay. The um, train versus pedestrians um, injuries. Last year we had 41 incidents with 29 fatalities. Uh, this year we've had seven versus 11 last year at the same time, so those are down. This slide, I think what's important, um, the response time, uh, if I look, when I looked at 08 and 09, the response time was 10 to 11 minutes, and the average train disruption is about an hour and nine, hour and ten minutes. And uh, that, that has continued the same over the last couple of years, and, and I attribute that. And, I, and I'm actually very proud of that number. I attribute that to the, the close coordination with, the, with both the Metro North and uh, Long Island Railroad, the coordination of the operational people and uh, the police officers in the field. And the Long Island Railroad mentioned the track program um, with, with the police officers assigned, and, and uh, that's one of the ways that we look to, to try to keep that number as, as low as possible. Uh, train versus vehicles, um, pr pr pretty much you can see the response time is the same thing, uh, although the train, train disruption is, is, uh, is a little less because um, the, the, the number of fatalities are less, and it uh, does not a, doesn't warrant a crime scene. So, uh, again, working together with the railroads, we're able to keep that number to a minimum. And that's the end of the slideshow. Okay. Very good. Any questions? A anybody have any questions for the chief? Ch you do? No? Chief, let me, let me, can I get some information from you when you get a chance? You don't have to produce it now. I'm looking for the actual number of police officers uh, in the whole agency that you had. Okay. Broken down by detectives, supervisors, uh, actual sure. number of dogs that you have. Okay. Um, can you give us an update on the status of the property that we agreed to purchase on the uh, for the K9 right. and, and at the next meeting? You don't have to do okay. it at this one. And and how far along we've come with that, and whether or not you're short staffed and you need more. Tell me what you need. Let me try to help with all, everybody here you you got to get yours too brother i mean safety <laughs> safety and security is number one right. number one you know it's good right i'm serious eh? you know don't make sure you get home safely right but i'm serious I, and, thank you and, and let me ask another question um just like in a in the nypd does uh, mta pay for the firearms for the police officers yes we do all right all of them yes 
Okay. Unlike, uh, that's actually unlike the NYPD. The NYPD, the officers buy their own guns. Here, okay. we, here we provide them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? No? Thank All you. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? This, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you. And good luck to you, uh, nurse. And God bless you, man. And save some lives out there, brother.